Okay, everyone, this is my spoiler review of X-Men the Animated Series, Season 5, Episode 9, Descent. This originally came out September 6th, 1997. Before I jump into a review, hit that sub button so you don't miss one of my reviews of X-Men the Animated Series. I'll also be doing X-Men 97 and covering all things X-Men in general. So we finally get the origin story of Mr. Sinister. And watching this episode today, it's pretty cool because it can actually set up knowing more about the character if he ever is to appear in X-Men 97, which I'm sure he will. And I wish this episode was earlier in the show, but it's still very good for what it is because you've waited the whole show to know what is this guy's deal? Why is he all white? What is going on? And what are his real motivations to make him this way? So we open in London in 1888. We open with a clock tower that looks straight out of Peter Pan. And we get to see Jack the Ripper here, which I did not expect to see in X-Men the Animated Series, which was cool. And he has those sinister eyes. And we meet Dr. James Xavier, and he is Charles' great-great-grandfather, and the difference is he has a lot more hair and a ginormous mustache. But I love it's the same exact face as Charles. But these crimes done by Jack the Ripper, James feels like he has the answer that Nathaniel Essex is behind this. But the inspector's like, I still can't believe that these sinister goings are the work of a man in his 60s. And James is like, Essex isn't human, sir. Been tracking him around the world all my life. I'm beginning to think he never was. Which is nice little writing there too, because lines like that make you question the man himself before he even went totally berserk if he ever really had a soul this guy but it's cool because they do it in the way that james xavier will narrate the rest of the episode for us while he's telling the inspector how it all began and it began in 1859 at the royal society where he worked with dr nathaniel essex but he was employed by of course lord gray connecting to the gene gray lineage and this was nathaniel essex's father-in-law so in some strange way mr sinister is related to Jean Grey, very distant. But Essex originally was driven and obsessed by Charles Darwin's theories and particularly natural selection. So Nathaniel Essex at this meeting says, isn't mankind due for the next evolutionary step? So you're starting to get the idea now of what his intentions are. But it's interesting that James Xavier really is a man of God. And this James Xavier we see from more in the past has a little less hair than the current one we're seeing but he's got the mutton chops going. But Nathaniel will start telling his hero, Charles Darwin, about the research he's done into mutated humans. But he's like, don't speak so loud about stuff that's free thinking. And he just signs his book. Doesn't really take him too seriously. And that book will be important later on, which we'll get to. But we learn Nathaniel's wife, Rebecca Gray, is sick. So because back in that time, it was looked down upon to treat your own family, James Xavier is the one treating Rebecca. But Nathaniel's basically like, you stink at this, and takes it into his own hands and wants to cure his wife himself. So he's taking samples of her blood. Now she says, what am I your guinea pig to him? Which is a little foreshadowing because that is how he'll treat people and you'll see it start to happen in this episode when he starts collecting mutants. Now he shows the rest of the Royal Society, what he's been up to. And he's like, gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Men of Tomorrow, which is a really good line. But I love the eerie music that plays behind this and will play throughout this episode. I think it's actually great and fits perfectly in the mood and time. But it's really a silly presentation. He's just showing these mutants do these tricks, basically. But Darwin's offended. He doesn't like where this is going. But Nathaniel's trying to make his point, saying that he believes one day humans can beat disease be more than men, be gods. And this is exactly what Mr. Sinister basically will become. And because of this, these blasphemous claims, Nathaniel is booted from the Royal Society. So this is what we see. He becomes obsessed with his research and he becomes recluse. This is where he went really, really mad, we'll say. And he's still trying to save Rebecca at the same time, but they say that he became more and more obsessed with the human mutation fact of it all. So he takes his own creation, this potion he made, and it makes his skin white. So this is where he's starting to get the powers of a Mr. Sinister. It's interesting though, Rebecca reveals she's been getting treatments from him, but we never really kind of see the outcome of that. We just learned at the end of the episode, she never spoke again. I don't know why she never spoke again in general. It was a little extreme, but we don't see the side effects ever happen to her, which was interesting. So at that point, why even have her take the treatments? Now, 
James will show up to Nathaniel. I like James doesn't even mention like, hey, what, what happened to you? Why, why is your skin so white? And Nathaniel will say to James, tell me, James, do they still speak of me at the Royal Society? And James has a great response. Indeed, they speak of sinister experiments you are rumored to perform. And I love that Nathaniel just likes the name when he hears it there. And we hear the little tune of the sinister music. It's corny, but great. But James will see the mutants he's had caged up here, these guinea pigs. And James and Nathaniel will just wrestle here. Nathaniel will even throw furniture at him. But James is able to get them out. And we get a nice moment with James because he finds a mutant named Flannery. And he shows that Xavier blood, that way of thinking as an Xavier, where he's accepting of people who are different and tells the townspeople to chill out. And the real monster is Mr. Sinister. And the tragedy for Nathaniel is in his obsession and trying to cure his wife. He got distracted with this other obsession of power and wanting to be a god and fighting disease, not being accepting. And then he lost his wife because of it. She was scared by the monster he'd become. So now in the present timeline of this episode, we'll see footage like he had alluded to before about James traveling all over the world looking for Essex and his new men. They finally find his flat. And we see Jack the Ripper is answering the Essex, so James was right that it was Mr. Sinister behind that version of Jack the Ripper. But I love, like, right here is where Nathaniel Essex just decides. He's like, you know what? Don't call me Essex no more. The this day forward, you address me as Mr. Sinister. I just thought that was so funny. And he gets away, and James is like, I fear I cannot catch him in my lifetime, but if I cannot, then I pray that someone else can. And you get the lightning strike, and it cuts to Charles Xavier, who is the person in current day trying to catch Mr. Sinister, which I love. And I love that he has the same book that Mr. Sinister had of Charles Darwin's book that is signed by him. And that it went from James Xavier all the way to Charles Xavier today. So just passing that mission on, I really love that. So overall, I'm going to give this episode an 8.7. I think it's very solid. It's a solid origin story. Like I said, I love the music they introduce here. And I love they just lean into kind of the cheesiness of Sinister as a villain with saying Sinister like five times in the episode. I I really liked it. And I think it makes sense for his character. I do wish they explained a little more about the actual potion he took and a little more about his powers in general. But still very good. And I like they did the narration route with James Xavier. And I like that he also had the same face as Charles, but with just more hair. And it makes you excited for X-Men 97 because you're all things now, this information you can take and run with and learn about characters and kind of expand on in the new show. Let me know your thoughts in the episode down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I read every comment, try to respond as many as I can. Hit that sub button and I'll see you next time.